Hi everyone and welcome to this knowledge clip on theories of international migration uh, whereby I will explain you structuralist approaches to international migration and in particular world systems theory which has been formulated by Immanuel Wallerstein. So if we want to understand structuralist approaches to uh, international migration we start always from dependency theorists and these are a group of theorists who are rooted in uh, kind of Marxists, neo-Marxist, um, sociological historical um, thinking about international relations who argue that the world is inherently uh, unequal, right? So uh, global power relations uh, do exist whereby some core countries do and generally that's the Western world do have power or uh, make the uh, peripheral countries dependent on these core countries. And they say, well, there is a globally stratified economic order whereby some countries have the power and can dominate basically uh, the other countries in the developing world who are structurally kept dependent on these core economies. And there's one sociologist, uh, Immanuel Wallerstein, who has been very famous, became very famous because of his world systems uh, theory, uh, which you can uh, see here on uh, the uh, graph uh, on the slide. So what Wallerstein indicated was that we have core countries who dominate the world economy. You have peripheral countries and peripheral countries are countries where there is uh, raw materials, where there is a lot of um, individuals that can work, who are unemployed, for example, where there is uh, consumer markets. And generally, the core countries are interested in these raw materials because in capitalistic economy, of course, you want to make profit the whole time. And how can you make most profit? By uh, taking the raw materials, for example, uh, from the peripheral countries at a very cheap price. And you can then sell them, of course, in the West. Then in the middle you have the semi-peripheral countries and these semi-peripheral countries are countries in emerging economies where some of the raw materials, for example, are being assembled. Think about uh, an iPhone, you might have an iPhone. Some of the materials of your iPhone might come from uh, a mine in Congo. Then that raw material is shipped towards, uh, let's say, Taiwan um, or uh, South Korea where there are some companies who assemble your iPhone and then in the end it gets sold also of course in the semi-peripheral and the peripheral countries but particularly in these core countries where a maximum of profit can be made. So that is the idea of Wallerstein, that there is structural dependencies and also that the countries in the core group of countries are very interested in keeping that structural dependency because for them it's important to make as much profit as uh, possible and to do so you need uh, for the capitalistic economy to keep the peripheral countries under your control. Now then the question is how does this influence or explain the existence of international migration? Um, and I noticed that this is something quite difficult very often to uh, understand for many students, which is why I will try to explain this with uh, a lot of images. So first of all, capitalistic companies in the core countries, they seek to maximize their profits, right? That is the essence of the capitalistic uh, economy, that you want to make as much profit as possible. There is many multinational companies, uh, companies who want to do so. Uh, and to do so, you have to look at the peripheral countries in Wallerstein's model. Now, what can you find in these peripheral countries? You can find raw materials, you can find land, you can find individuals um, who can cheaply uh, work for you, and you can also find consumer materials over there. And that, of course, is all very interesting for uh, these companies. The problem, of course, is that if your company, let's say, is American, you do not have direct control on uh, all these different uh, elements in, let's say, uh, Burkina Faso or any other developing country. So what happens is that previously, of course, there was colonialism, which meant that these capitalistic companies had quite a lot of control uh, because of the colonial regime. Afterwards, we had the independence of the different colonies, but uh, structuralist theorists, they argue that still today we have an era of neocolonialism, whereby the states are basically still dependent on 
the capitalistic companies of the West because they do keep through all kind of relationships uh, pressure on the local politicians who then still act uh, as kind of an in-between person between the capitalistic companies and the local uh, communities. And the result of this is that instead of having these raw materials, this land, um, this, uh, these people that can work under control of national uh, economies or national uh, governments or regional governments, uh, this is not happening and you have all these peripheral areas that are actually under control of the global uh, capitalistic market. And that means that because of this uh, global system, there's a lot of social changes happening in these traditional uh, communities. Changes from um, people who, are, who experience weakening social bonds with other people, whereby there is much more consumerism, where there is much more individualism. Uh, there is a lot of uh, images also that come from the developed world that influence people's behaviors, but also people's aspirations. And that, of course, leads to uh, decisions to migrate, because once people start to foreground uh, a more individualistic, consumerist lifestyle, that leads to many social changes. And as a result of that, you see that many people either migrate internally to, uh, for example, places where they can work for multinational companies in, let's say, factories, or they move internationally also. Next to this, of course, also because the multinational companies very often also have an intrinsic interest in uh, attracting the best and brightest in these countries as well. So that is, in a nutshell, what world systems theories and structuralist approaches say about international migration. So the structural dependencies between countries um, make it a kind of a natural consequence that people will start to migrate because of a change in uh, their lifestyle, in their livelihood, because of social changes that follow globalization and capitalistic dependency relationships. Thank you for uh, watching this video.